Well, the way it works when I cast is I will listen to professional demo reels that the actors have done, and then we have audition sessions, and then I have, and then I test them out a little bit and see if they follow direction and whatnot. I also have a group of about 30 voice actors I work with on a semi-regular ba- a regular basis, really. And so I always try to, I know what voices fit where. I know what my people can do. And I, because, you know, I don't want to have to train somebody about dubbing, you know. I'd rather just use the people I know that know the pauses and all the little Winkler Productions tricks that we do and how I write my scripts. I write all the scripts. I don't have other writers. I'm not a factory turning out thousands of hours of content every week. Okay, like some companies are do that. I don't. I personally will write and produce and direct all the material. And um, usually feature films. Usually feature films. Um, and so, although we've done series before, and we can easily do series. But um, in a nutshell, that's how we do the casting. There's a difference between anime and live action. When you're dubbing for live action, it's infinitely more complicated and detailed, okay? Because that really has to be perfect. With anime, it's the same type of attention to detail, but you're dealing with a flap that's going up and down, generally. And so, while we still give it 110%, it's easier to dub to anime than it is to live action. But um, it's all in the scripts. It's my dubbing scripts. Okay? That's the foundation upon which everything is built. If that script has problems, forget it. You're in, you've got nightmares. When we subtitle a film, it's a literal translation of the Japanese, okay? I have a wonderful translator, Emily Midori Nelson, and she translates the scripts. And those are the scripts that we use for the subtitles. Those are the ones that the fan groups and people who like to watch their stuff subtitled will see. And it's exact. It's authentic to what the Japanese characters are saying, okay? Now, for the rest of the world, for the other 330 million Americans, and for every single kid in the audience, they will watch my dubbed versions. My dubbed versions are authentic and faithful to what the Japanese have created. We never edit the picture. We never physically cut stuff out of the movies at all. It's all uncut, unedited. Um, But I do have to rewrite the scripts for the dubbing purposes to match the lip syncs and the vowels and the consonants and all the funny things that they do. And I have to add all the laughter and the coughing and the panting. And if somebody's running, how many times did they pant? What was the laughter? Was it six, seven ha-has? What was it? You know, there's Anything that comes out of the mouth, whether it's word, it doesn't have to be words. It can be a cough, it sneeze, whatever. The voice actor has to do in the booth. And so my scripts, again, if you see them, they're so detailed. And the pauses are there. And the directions for teeth or movements or cough or pant or whatever, everything is written down. And so when the actors get into the dubbing booth, everything's there. And there we record everything. And then in the post-production, we tweak it even more. And you have what is essentially a perfect performance, you know. I have to, I always get the emotions out of the actors. You know, who are you? What do you want? Okay, what does he want in the scene? How does he feel? Look at the expression. Look at how he's, how he's reacting. He's all crazy. Or she's sad. She's tragic. More sadness. More... A lot of times, it's there's a lot of over-the-top acting when they're in the superhero modes, you know. And I got to really get bring up the energy for for people. Uh, some actors I have to always keep I have to bring them down, you know. In dialogue scenes, what takes maybe four sentences in Japanese, we can do it in one sentence in English, which which means I then have to use some artistic creative license and create some dialogue that aids the plot, keeps the plot moving, and stays 
stays in continuity of what the character is saying and thinking. So it's really a lot of, there is a, I mean, it, it is, it's creative writing. It's creative writing. You are staying faithful to those characters and how they would think and how they would, the dialogue they would use, the words that they would use. But you're creating all new stuff in those rare circumstances where I have to fill space. Because in Japanese, it was short, and in English, it, or vice versa, and there's extra flaps I have to fill. You know, at, movement, mouth movements. Humor is another thing. It's very strange. Comedy and humor does not always translate well. People will laugh at jokes that are not, when you translate them, they're not funny. So then you can inject a little American humor into it. Again, staying in line with what the plot is, what the story is, but you make it a little bit funnier, a little bit uh, more... Uh, you give it more of an American sense of humor, and it makes the comedy work. And that's when, when all the characters are laughing. you got a typical ha-ha ending of, of a show or film or whatever. It's genuinely funny because I wrote something that was funny, where the translation's not funny to, a, to an audience because something goes wrong in the translation. When I cast these voices, it's like trying to fit a key in a lock. you got to get the right sound and you say to yourself, do I believe that that voice is coming out of that face? Then the emotion has to match the Japanese actor exactly. Our American actors have to sort of channel. I mean, I don't want to go into woo-woo stuff or anything, but they have to kind of channel those actors and really be and feel those emotions that those Japanese actors are feeling and to think the thoughts of what those Japanese actors are thinking. And that's how you get a fantastic performance. There's all sorts of other tricks to dubbing, okay? Speeding up, slowing down, uh, taking pauses. Uh, the way I write my English dubbing scripts is a certain method I use where there's certain instructions and cues the actors know ahead of time. Oh, I have to do this with my mouth or teeth. You know, like, <laughs> you know, a certain laughter. Ha, ha, ha would be H-A-H-A-H-A. <laughs> you know, H-E-H-H-E-H, you know. All sorts of, there's certain things like, mm, that's a Japanese cultural thing. Yes, yes, but it's a, mm, but the intention is, mm. Many times when they fight, they'll cry out, or they'll, they'll announce the weapon they're going to use, you know, and it's always a, mm, it's always going up, you know, like, uh, Xanadium Beam, you know, that type of thing is, ba 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 you know. There's all these little things, proximity. When you're dubbing, if if I'm talking to somebody that's three blocks away, I'm going to scream it out to them three blocks away. But if you're right next to me, did you see that guy over there? What's he doing? I mean, the proximity of the person you're talking to changes so many things.